What's up guys, welcome back to another Arc Dev Kit tutorial. So, this is the second part of my cave creation tutorial, and we're actually going to be looking at designing a cave in this video, and by the end of it we will have completed a cave. I've actually already been working on one this afternoon, so what I'm going to do, we're going to lay it out a little bit differently than usual, is I'm going to show you the cave that I've already made, and we'll have a run around and see what it looks like, and then I will show you what I've done, and we'll create a new one as well, just so you guys can get the full gist of how it works. And this video shouldn't be too long, hopefully. So, we're actually going to start the episode by playing our map, and we'll go have a look at the cave that I've designed. Alright guys, welcome back. So, now we're just standing outside the cave I've made. So we're going to go have a wander around and have a look at all the different parts. And then we're going to design another one, so that you can see how it all comes together, and the different basic principles around doing it. So, let's go have a wander around the one that I've been making today. Now, as we walk up to it, you can see I have got a light in the front, just to kind of light up the entrance a bit, so you can see that it's a cave from far away. Wander inside. And this is where it starts to get nice and interesting. So, in my opinion, one of the most important parts of a cave is to have lots of nice lighting in there, because it gives it that really nice feeling that you're in a mysterious place inside the arc, you know. So, what I've done here is I've taken these orange crystals from the content browser, and I've put lights inside them. They are mostly white, ever so slightly orange, and they are glowing from the inside of the crystals. It gives it a really nice effect inside the cave. And then we've got another one here, the blue crystal. That's usually used for the ice cave. I thought I'd chuck one in here as well. And then we've got some of these little glowing mushrooms over here. And they give off a really nice light as well. This one's a lot brighter because I've actually mixed it with another light that's on the ceiling. Just there, which you can't see because we're not in the editor mode. But they give off a lovely light as well and make it feel a lot more mysterious in here. So let's follow the cave round. And then over here we've got a slightly lower part, along with some more of those mushrooms. We have to bend down for. And then here would be where we would put the artifact if we were actually making this a full cave today. Because uh, obviously it's the end of the road, maybe a loot drop of the artifact over here. There's nothing in this corner, a little bit dark. Probably do the light in there. But now let's run back. And now I will jump out of the play mode and we go and have a look what the cave looks like without any of the other levels around it. And we can have a look at it from above and see what the shape is like. So here we go guys. This is our cave by itself. As you can see it's completely closed off from the outside so there's no light shining in because obviously landscapes are see-through from underneath. And I've just used a whole bunch of stuff from the content browser basically. Um, these are all set to block all collisions so you can't run through them. And they are listed in the content browser as cave rocks, I think, so they're nice and easy to find. And then they're all built on a landscape down the bottom as well, which has just been painted into the shape of the cave. So if I turn on our rock layer as well, you can see that I've actually built it around the entrance. So when you go in, this is our little rock here that we placed last episode, and then it merges into a landscape here, and then carries on through as a landscape for the rest of the time. And that just makes it a little bit easier to blend the cave level and the outer level together. If you've got a rock in the middle, you have to try and make two landscapes match up. That can look a bit iffy. So now I've had a little look at how it's made. Let's start to design another one so I can show you guys all the different things that you need to do in a bit more detail. Alright guys, so the first step to this is you need to have your rocks layer enabled so that you can see our entrance here. Otherwise we're not going to be able to get the landscape to match up to this. And then there'll be a drop into the cave or something, and we don't want that. We just need to have the landscape level with the entrance so we get it to all match up nicely. So to start off with, we need to make a new level. So if we go up to our levels window here, and click on this little drop down menu, and then press create new. Brings up this new window, and we're going to type in tutorial map. Score cave three. Obviously, you can put cave one, cave six, it doesn't matter. I've put number three because this is my third attempt. And then we'll give it a minute and it'll load itself in. And here we are, we're ready to go. So all we need to do to activate this level is double click on it. And it's now an active level. It's all been loaded in properly. Now, the first step is obviously to create our landscape. So we've still got our rocks level showing, which is obviously very important. Now let's go up a bit, we've got a good angle. Over to our modes tab and then click on landscapes. So, I've got this landscape set to 15 by 15 quads. That's a pretty good size, because if I go up a bit, you can see it's roughly the same size as the cave was, if not a little bit bigger, which is good, because it gives us a bit of room to work with. Obviously, if you're making a big map and a huge 
massive expanse of a cave, you obviously need a bigger landscape. But for this one, we'll just go for the 15 by 15. Hit create. Here we go. Obviously, of course, as always, there's a couple of things we need to set up for the landscape. So let's click on the icon up here and then set up our second material. Our mi underscore new island hole. Here we go. Cover that in my first tutorial if you haven't seen that already. And then uncheck our cast static shadow box. And then let's set the preset to ground because that'll mean, or ground terrain, sorry, because that'll mean that we are able to place items in here if we need to. Now let's go down and make sure that they line up correctly, which I think they do, which is good. A little bit of a gap, but that's okay. We can use the sculpt tool for that. But now let's hide the rocks layer so we've got a better view. And then give this a quick paint job over the top just to make it look a little bit easier on the eyes and see actually what we're molding around. Use the shared pebbles number two. Give it a bit of a paint. There we go. So that's all painted up now. And if we bring back our rocks level here, you can see that it does match up in the height quite nicely there, which is all good. Now comes the slightly stranger bit. We're going to go back to our modes tab and to our landscape sculpt. And then we're going to change our sculpt tool to the visibility. And let's zoom out a bit. And we're going to erase the entire landscape. So let's just use our visibility tool, doing the left click, and erase the entire landscape. Brush a little bit bigger. There we go. So nothing left of it now. As you can see, there's just that yellow box around the edge. Bring our brush size down. So this is the clever bit. If we hold down our shift button and left click again, we can selectively paint our landscape back on, which allows us to create the shape of the cave that we want. So in this whole area with the yellow boxes where we've made our landscape, we can now shift and click in our landscape, which is really useful and it enables us to create quite a nice little cave shape really quickly. But obviously we do now need to bear in mind because of the shape of this map, it might be different with yours, with my map, if I go back to my levels and I bring my landscape back in, you can see that because of the shape of this hill, I've now got my new landscape poking through, which obviously I don't want. So let's erase that. Obviously it's not erasing this landscape because I've still got my cave level selected. Make sure it's not doing anywhere else. Yep. So let's hide that landscape again. And then we'll just do the here. We'll just do a bit of a short cave for this so it all loads in a little bit quicker. There we go. So the next step of this is going to be the sculpting. So we'll switch back to our sculpt tool. Head down to the entrance here. So we're obviously going to need a really small brush size for this. Go with 100. Head over and start to just raise up around here a little bit so it meets up with this rock. And we can always switch to our detail lighting as well if we need to see a little bit better because it can be quite difficult to see now that we're lower down. Turn up the fall off a little bit, just to make it look a little bit smoother. There we go. So we do have a smooth tool as well, of course. We can use to just smooth it out a little bit, and then bring it back up again with our sculpt tool. There we go. So that's the entrance to our cave pretty much done in terms of the floor anyway. Still a lot more to do with the rest of it. So now obviously the next step of this is going to be to jump into our place tool and into the content browser. And we're going to head back to the main game folder and just do a search for cave. And then if we stick our static mesh filter on there, you can see we're now starting to get up all the little bits of decoration that we can use for building our caves. However, along with that, there is also these things in here, this entrance optimized files. There's lots of these called optimized meshes and stuff. And if I drag one of these on to show you, they're actually entire sections of the caves from the island. So if you really just needed to get a cave bashed out quickly, you could in theory use these to an extent on top of your landscape or alongside a landscape just to help create more of a proper arc feel without having to put the effort in. But to be honest, I would just go and go ahead and design your own because you're going to get a better feel out of it 
and people aren't going to play a map and go, oh look, he's just using the same caves of the island. So I would avoid that, but they are there if you need them. So we're going to go through our content browser. Obviously there's a lot here, so let's refine it a bit. Go for cave wall. Here we go. So these are the ones that I used on my cave. They look quite nice. We drag these in here. You can see that we've just got a nice kind of classic arc style wall. Let's spin it around. That'll do. And then make sure we set our collisions on it properly. So we want it from no collision to block all. Because this isn't ground, so it doesn't need to be buildable on, so we use it as block all. Let's drag it out a bit. Spin it around one more. And into the end. There we go. There's nothing wrong with making things merge together in this. You can smudge things together and make things clip into each other as much as you want because the closer everything is together, the better it will look and you're not going to notice things clipping into each other, really, when you're inside a dark cave fighting off a load of scorpions and snakes and stuff. You're not going to be paying attention to how the different walls merge together, so it's all right to do that. Now, a quick way of getting the other wall, obviously, is we find this arrow, hold down our Alt button and drag over. Now we've got a copy and it's got the same collision presets and everything like that as well. So let's just drag that a little bit further that way and a little bit down. So we've got a wall there as well. And here we go. You can see already the cave starting to come together on the inside. So we're just going to do that a couple more times for these. Well, there we go guys. You can see we've got a bit of a wall shape going on now. So the cave is one long tunnel. All I've done really is just copied and pasted these walls. You can use different ones, but they're kind of, they're intricate enough that if you copy and paste them, it's not too noticeable. Uh, but if you do want to use other ones, there are obviously lots of different options that you can use in the content browser. And now let's move on to the roof. Just do a search for cave ceiling. Here we go. Drag this one on. Some of them are pretty big, it's all right. Lift it up a bit so it's not too close to the ground. Drag it along. There we go. It's not too bad. Obviously the main aim for the ceilings is to block out all the light that's going to be shining through the landscape. And of course to stop someone flying through there with a pteranodon and clipping through and ending up under the map. Because if you're playing on a PvP server, that's pretty game breaking so it's quite important to make sure you've got all your collisions right hold down alt and drag these along again here we go right now as you can see it's pretty much pitch black in there which is what we were after switch to our detail lighting go inside yeah so we've just got a nice long tunnel now which is pretty much pitch black inside except for a couple of bits up here just sort that out quickly. So now we can start to work on a couple of lights to put in here. So to show you effect of the lights that we're going to use, I'm just going to turn the detail lighting off. As you can see, it's pretty much pitch black in here. And then I'm going to go up to my place tool up here. And then under basic, you can see there's this option here called point light. So I'm just going to drag that in. And as you can see, it's starting to light up our cave. And this is what the arc devs have been using to light up their caves ever since the beginning. So we can just chuck one over here, let's say. Move it up a little bit. And then if we scroll up in its settings, we've got our light color here. And we can use this to give it a bit more of an eerie feel inside the cave. So let's go a bit more orange. And there we go. You can see it's starting to look quite nice in here now. Let's move along this way a bit more. Got a bit of a, an issue with the wall there. Sort that out quickly. All right, that looks fine. So, switch back to the normal lighting again. Get ourselves another point light. Go up here in the top. And I'll actually leave this one mostly white so it'll light up the entrance to the cave. A little bit of a tint there to make it a bit warmer. And now let's have a look through the content browser again to find some more meshes put in to make this look a little bit more aesthetically pleasing. 
So obviously in Ark at the moment there is the alien things in all of the caves. We've got these big columns here which are probably going to end up in the tech cave. But we can use Minar cave as well. If you pay attention there are quite a few dotted around. So let's just drag this over here. As you can see it's got that really fancy morph effect. They've all been inputting into the game now. So actually that's a bit more intricate so let's drag that along over here. And this is the sort of stuff that you can expect to be seeing in the tech cave when that gets released in a couple of weeks. And it will be all this sort of alien stuff, which leads up to one big endgame boss, which has this same similar kind of morphing effect that all of the new things in the game do. And it's a pretty cool boss actually. But it's been in the dev kit for a while, I think it's been included in quite a lot of mods. Same model for it, so you know, their surprise has been spoiled a little bit. I think they'll, they'll definitely pull it out and find something pretty cool to put at the end of the cave that we can all appreciate. So the last thing I'm going to go over quickly before I make a bit of a time lapse of this is going to be the little crystal lights that I showed in my cave earlier. So let's find ourselves a crystal. The cave crystal. Here we go. So this is the one I used. can drag it in here. As you can see, it's pretty massive. So we'll just scale it down to half. Type in over here. 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.5, there we go, and this does have a bit of a glow already because it is a cave crystal, that's what it's been made for, we chuck it over the edge here, there we go, and grab ourselves one of our point lights, we can actually just position it so it's inside, there we go, set the color to be a bit more orange there we go you can see that gives quite a nice effect having those at the edge so I'm going to do a bit more work on this and I'll time lapse it for you and I'll bring you guys all back when it's done Hey guys, welcome back. So, I had a bit of an issue with the dev kit again, and of course it did roll back again. There was an update that came out the other day, so hopefully that should be a bit more fixed now. But uh, I thought we'd just run through this cave, which I have now redesigned from what you saw in the time lapse. But it's pretty much the same thing, it's just missing a couple of bits. Um, I thought we'll have a run through and have a look what it all looks like. We've still got this archway here, which I quite liked um, from the time lapsed one. As you can see, I have actually got a little point light up here, which is nice. It just kind of exaggerates the cave entrance. Oh exaggerates the cave entrance and you can see from far away there is a cave there let's have a wander in we've got these nice little crystals as well this one is sticking in the wall a little bit but if you're fighting off a load of cave mobs you're not really going to see that then we've got this thing here which i quite like the addition of it's a similar to this but i've actually pushed it into the wall a bit which you can't really see and then put a light underneath it just to accentuate it and it looks awesome I really like that addition. I think it, you know, adds a bit more atmosphere. If you had a few of them dotted around, maybe one coming out the ceiling, that would look super cool. And then we've got some more of these fancy tech meshes down here. I really like these. They're, you know, they're, I reckon they'll be in the tech cave. This thing over here, that's going to be something techy as well. You know, this sort of stuff. It's so cool just to whack in a cave. It just kind of gives it that, you know, alien-y feel that the ARC devs are going for at the moment. And, I mean, I really like it. Personally, I'm really excited for the tech cave. I think it's going to be awesome fun to go through it. And, you know, to see all the stuff they've implemented, all these moving meshes and all that. But, you know, we'll see how it works out. I know this tutorial is running a little bit long. What I'll do is I'll end this video here and then I'll put out another video later. Just a short one covering how to do things like implementing reverb into a cave. So you get the nice kind of sound of all your movements bouncing around the cave and all that. But for now, I think we're going to end this here. So thank you very much for watching. I hope it helped you out and you enjoyed my little time lapse. Of course, if this video did help you out, then please leave a like, comment and subscribe. 
and you know leave me a comment if there's anything that you want to see i will happily make a video dedicated to a couple of things that you guys have requested for in the comments and of course subscribe for more tutorials like this one i think we're actually going to move on to a bit more of uh mod creation so creating some different items for in game maybe some new resources for now but i will definitely carry on working on these map ones as well so thanks for watching guys and i'll see you in the next one <laughs>